Jurassic. Hey everybody, Dr. O here. This is going to be a long, meaty video. You're going to have to watch it more than once. The skull's just, there's a lot here, right? So I'll cover the sutures when I get to a different slide, but we're just going to walk through the bones from different angles, and uh, I hope this helps as much as it can. So first we have the frontal bone, the frontal bone there on your forehead. Then we have your two parietal bones. They make up the top of your brain case there. And then on the back we have the occipital bone, the temporal bone near the temple. I always kind of think of the temples being up here. That's actually where the sphenoid bone would be, but the temporal bone is going to be that big bone around your ear. The key prominences there we have are the mastoid process. That's going to be the insertion to the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Then we have the styloid process. Think of a stylus like a pen. Uh, there we have the, uh, there you can see the external acoustic meatus or you can see it called the external auditory canal. That's going to be the opening into your ear hole there. And then we have the mandibular fossa where the temporal mandibular joint is going to be, your TMJ. So those are all the key structures there with the temporal bone. Next we have the zygomatic arch, which can be a little confusing because you see it's the zygomatic process of the temporal bone fuses with the temporal process of the zygomatic bone, the zygomatic bone being your cheekbone there. So that's your zygomatic arch. Then we have the sphenoid bone. I'll show you. You can see that a lot better when we pop the top off of the skull, but the sphenoid bone is going to be there on the outside. The sphenoid bone is called the keystone of your skull because it connects to all the other critical bones there. The zygomatic bone, I just mentioned, your cheekbone there, the only uh, prominence there would be that temporal process of the zygomatic bone that makes up part of your zygomatic arch. Nasal bone, the bony portion of your nose, obviously you've got a lot of cartilage there in front of it, but that's your nasal bone. Uh, right behind that you see the lacrimal bone, think lacrimal for tears, so lacrimal bone. Then the ethmoid bone, I have to explode the skull a bit for you to see the ethmoid bone, but you can see a little bit of it there inside the orbit of the eye. Then we have the maxilla and the mandible. So I'll show, I'll show you some more things from there, but the maxilla is just the upper jaw, and I'll show you the, the, the parts of that in just a little bit. And then the mandible, you can see here the mental foramen, that little hole there. The mental foramen is right there on the chin. Then the mental protuberance would be where the chin juts, juts out there at the front of the mandible. So I have some more things to say about those, but I'll show you some different views. So that's the lateral view of the skull. This is just, uh, I wanted to show you inside the temporal bone. So you have what's called the petrous portion of the temporal bone is going to be where your middle and the, the, that's what the bone that's encased in the middle and internal ear. It's a very, very hard part of the temporal bone. So one of the functions of the temporal bone is to uh, support the structures involved in hearing. Uh, so a more close-up view of the mandible. I already mentioned the mental foramen there and the mental protuberance. We have the mandibular ramus. A ramus is an angle. So where the mandible changes directions would be the mandibular ramus there. I already said the mental foramen. The alveolar process. So each of the sockets that one of your teeth goes into is called an alveolar process. All of them as a group is the alveolar arch. So you'll see that with the upper jaw, the maxilla as well. Mandibular condyle there on the back. That's going to be what forms your TMJ, your temporal bone, and your mandible form the temporal mandibular joint or your TMJ. So you can talk and eat and everything else. Coronoid process is going to be a little a flatter piece of bone on the front, the muscles that are going to attach there that are involved in mastication or chewing. So that's going to be your coronoid process. And then you have the condylar process there uh, is, is on the inside there of that mandibular condyle on the other side. So those are the parts of the mandible to know. Uh, these are the sutures, so you should be, you know, I will ask you to know, at least on our identification quizzes, I'll ask you to know your sutures. So here you see the coronal suture is a suture that connects the frontal bones to your two parietal bones. Sagittal suture, you can't see here, I can show you on a different view, but the sagittal suture connects the two parietal bones right there in the middle. The lambdoid, or you may sometimes see it called the lambdoidal suture, connects the parietal bones to the occipital bone. Then the squamous, or sometimes called squamosal suture, is going to connect the temporal bone to the parietal bone. So notice that Every suture is connecting the parietal bone to at least uh, one other bone. Now we see a frontal view of your skull. So we already talked about the frontal bone, but now you can see these supraorbital foramens. Remember, a foramen is a whole supraorbital above the orbit. So that's the supraorbital foramen of the frontal bone. The maxilla. We have the infraorbital foramens there, and then you do have, just like we did with the mandible, each of the sockets that a tooth fits in is called the alveolar process. All of them as a group would be the alveolar arch. You have the nasal bone again, lacrimal bone behind it. Uh, inside that hole, you see the nasal septum, which is made of two bones, the vomer. So vomer means plow, so this plow-shaped bone called the vomer. And then we have the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone, so they make up the, the hard nasal septum inside there.
So the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone and the vomer bone make up your nasal septum. Um, I'll show you the ethmoid bone later. Like I said, I, ha I have to kind of pop the other bones off or disarticulate this in order to show you some of the key pieces of the ethmoid bone. So it's, it is important, but we'll come back to it. But you can see there the middle and inferior nasal conche, which, which the, they create turbulence. So as you breathe in, as air runs through these nasal conche in these openings called meatuses, it swirls. And as air swirls in your nose, it's warmed up, you humidified, and filtered. So that's very, very important. But we'll talk about that more with breathing. And I'll show you that in another image as well. All right, so you can't. So notice until, you t until we take the skull apart, you cannot see the superior nasal conche. But you can see them here. So the superior, middle, and inferior nasal conche of the ethmoid bone, they create these, these openings, these meatuses that causes air to swirl when you breathe. Um, this image is also, as we're not talking about the sphenoid bone, but you notice the sphenoidal sinus or sphenoid sinus. This is the best image to see the sphenoid sinus because it's, it's inside the sphenoid bone, so you can't see it unless it's been taken apart. All right, here we see the ethmoid bone, so I won't go through the ones we've already talked about. We'll just quickly, we talked about the perpendicular plate being part of your nasal septum. We talked about the nasal conche, but we have not talked about the top portion of the ethmoid bone, which makes, which is the Christagalli and the cribriform plate. So the Christagalli, which means rooster's comb or rooster's crest, is actually an attachment. It's this bony projection, but it's an attachment point for part of the covering of your brain called the falx cerebri, so kind of interesting. Uh, that's actually really important because with concussion, this connected tissue actually can send shock waves right down into the center of your brain because of how hard it is and how and how it's attached here to the ethmoid bone, which is why we don't when concussions aren't just bruises on the outside of your brain, they actually send shock waves right to the center, which is why they can impact hormones and all sorts of things. The cribriform plate is going to have a bunch of tiny holes in it, not ethmoid air cells; those are separate. But the cribriform plate has little tiny holes in it that the passageway for little parts of your olfactory nerve. So there are sensory receptors from inside your nose travel through the ethmoid bone to get to the olfactory bulb and then back to your brain so you can smell. Um, ethmoid air cells, they're actually a type of, they're a type of sinus there. Okay, now we have the back view. Notice you can see the sagittal suture finally. So the suture that connects the two uh, uh, parietal bones is there. What else? The bump on the back of your bone, uh, back of the skull, is part of the occipital bone called the external occipital protuberance. And then we have, I already mentioned the sagittal suture. And then you can see the occipital condyles here too. The two, the two rounded flat occipital condyles, that's actually where your skull sits on C1, the first cervical vertebrae called the atlas. And here we see the underside of the skull. What haven't we seen already? Uh, the palatine bone, this is actually the only view that allows you to see the palatine bone there in the cent center. Like the name implies, it is part of your palate, but it isn't your whole palate, the roof of your mouth. Most of the hard palate, the roof of your mouth, is the palatine process of the maxilla or the maxillary bone there. So that's kind of confuses students sometimes. So the roof of your mouth is primarily the palatine process of the maxilla and that little palatine bone behind it. Uh, you can see the occipital condyles again. You already mentioned them. Then we have the foramen magnum, which is a foramen as a whole. So the foramen magnum is the biggest hole in our skull, and that's how the spinal cord, the brain stem into the spinal cord, exits the skull. All right, we're uh, almost done here. Now this is we're looking down. We pop the top off of the skull and we're, we're peering down into it. So you can see the you can see the cristagalli and the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone well here. Then you can see that sphenoid bone and it looks like a bat. It's a very interesting looking bone. But the key structure here is going to be the cella tersica, which means Turkish saddle, because the cella tersica is where your pituitary gland sits. So we'll cover that more with the endocrine system. But the cella tersica is the part of your skull, part of your sphenoid bone that protects the pituitary gland. You can. You can also see here the internal auditory meatus or internal auditory canal. Remember, you see the external auditory canals on the outside of the temporal bone. You can see the internal here. It's called the internal acoustic meatus, but you can call it the internal auditory meatus as well. I think that's it. Yeah. So that's all the different angles and views of the skull. Those are all the, all the parts of the skull that I expect you to know. I hope this helps. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.